Hey guys, welcome to Red 5 o. Thank you for tuning in to another video. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. So my 2019 Mustang GT recently crossed 20,000 miles. So we are going to be giving an ownership experience or ownership review of my 2019 Mustang GT in the 20,000 miles I have owned this car. I actually bought this car in August 2019. So it has actually been two years since I've gotten this car. So I'm averaging around 10,000 miles a year. I do enjoy every single mile that I've put in this car though. I always find excuses to just go out and get in the car and have some fun driving this thing. I did do a two year review of my 2019 Mustang GT on this channel, which actually covers some of the goods and the bad of the ownership experience I've had for the two years. Um, pretty much basically from the engine, transmission, what I really like about owning this Mustang GT. So I'm not gonna make this video about the same pros and cons that I did. Um, so if you wanted to check that out in terms of what my ownership experience has been like, you can go click the, vi uh, click the video in the description or the card above, which will really get you the whole pros and cons list and what I like about it, what I would change about this car. So with the car recently hitting 20,000 miles, this video will be covering the all the maintenance I've had to do so far in the 20,000 miles I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT and reliability concerns that I've had, such as taking it to the dealership with some of the transmission issues um, and what I really think of the reliability in the future if I plan to own this car for a long time. With that being said, let's dive right into the video. I also just want to take a minute to just highlight the mods I've done in the 20,000 miles I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT. The first mod that I did to my 2019 Mustang GT was this Corsa Extreme Active Exhaust, as you can see right here. The setup is amazing and very loud. Um, uh, the next mod I did to my 2019 Mustang GT was the window tint. This is 20% all around and no window tint in the windshield. You can probably see the third mod right there, which is the Pal Shifters extension. As you can see, they're bright red, which matches the exterior of the car. And they're obviously extensions compared to the stock ones, which are very tiny, so it makes it a little bit easier to use. I've got reviews for all of these mods on my channel, so if you are interested in doing one of these mods and you want to just learn more about it, you can definitely click the links in the description and just learn more about it, what my overview is. But personally, I love all of these mods, but I go into a lot more detail in these reviews. I do plan on doing a lot more mods to my 2019 Mustang GT, such as the lowering springs, tune, probably a supercharger. So there's a lot more to come to this build. Uh, definitely going to get wider tires, as we'll discuss later. So make sure you are subscribed to Red 5.0 so you can follow the build along. Okay, so I'm going to start with some of the maintenance I've had to do in my 2019 Mustang GT so far and the 20,000 miles I've owned it. Ford recommends doing oil changes every 7,500 miles or so with the filter change. Um, so with that being said, I've actually done the oil change three times, but I have personally used 5,000 miles as the oil interval for my 2019 Mustang GT. So I've actually gone through three oil changes in the ownership of the 20,000 miles. And as you have guessed, I am up for my fourth oil change. According to Ford, I could probably push it, but I don't want to. I think it's just a very, very small price to pay if you intend to keep the car for a long term, which I do. So soon I'll be taking in my 2019 Mustang GT to my dealership to get the fourth oil change. Uh, this time I'll actually go with full synthetic. Previously they've done um, synthetic blend, which is what Ford uh, manual recommends as well. Um, I, when I got this car, I had these four pass uh, reward points for getting the car. So they were able to offer three complimentary oil change. Well, third one I had to pay a little bit is because they used this works package, which was part of the synthetic blend. I would have had to pay extra for the synthetic, full synthetic oil. So what has it really cost me to get those three old changes at my dealership so far in the 20,000 miles I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT? Believe it or not, it cost me like $25 to get all those three old changes, not $25 each, but in total, which in my opinion is an amazing deal. Now that I'm out of those free old changes, because you know, everything free doesn't last forever, what, do, what am I gonna do for my fourth oil change? I actually tried to debate that in my head. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and with the dealership just because having the warranty records and everything is a big pro. I did call my dealership earlier this week. They said they're gonna be charging me about $100 for full synthetic. So I feel like that's a pretty good deal. If I was to do it at an indie mechanic, the oil and the filter alone would cost me about $60, $65. And that would pay him at least 20 bucks to do the oil change if I'm not doing it by myself, which would make about 80, 85. So the difference between $180, $100 and $80 is not much. And for just getting a peace of mind and having everything on the record would be a big, big benefit. 
for my ownership of my 2019 Mustang GT. I also didn't do the first oil change that some people recommend to do it around 1,000 miles uh, just right after the braking period just to kind of get all the gunk out. And a lot of people tend to just do the first oil change at 1,000 miles and then follow the regular interval. I did skip on that. I didn't think it was necessary because I did follow the braking procedure and just kept it under 1,000 miles or under a certain RPM, like 4,000 or so before it hit the thousand miles and that's when i kind of slowly gradually introduced like higher rpm driving into this car but i didn't think it was all that necessary to do a thousand mile oil change so all in all for oil changes i've gotten three oil changes i'm doing it at 5000 interval as opposed to 7500 which is what ford recommends and i've had to pay only 25 dollars in total for these three oil changes i'm coming up on my ford so i'll end up paying 100 dollars for that oil change because i'm going to be going through my dealership i did it on my own probably around $80. Okay, so enough of the old change, that's the basic car maintenance. Um, two other things that pop out to a lot of people is tires and brakes, because they wear and tear. They're a wear and tear item, so over time, they will be, they will, they will need some replacement. So let's take a look at the brakes first. The brakes on my 2019 Mustang GT for the 20,000 miles I've owned it have been pretty great. I mean, they still got very good bite to them. They're all very decent and I don't have any complaints with them. I don't see any brake fade or rotor shaking, but again, then that's not really expected when you have a car that has run only 20,000 miles. I don't necessarily track my car or autocross it. I've done it once only, so I imagine if I start doing those regularly, the brakes would eventually start fading and I would need replacement. I probably can think the brakes will probably last me, I don't know, 50,000 miles or so. Uh, before they need replacement unless I start tracking my car or autocrossing. I do plan to do autocross a lot more often So maybe I'll be needing brakes sooner than I expected to All right, so now on to the tires. So like I said, I've had this for about 20,000 miles the tires are Pirelli P0 all-season tires. They are 255 and 19s because I do have the black accent package which comes with these very very nice wheels if you had the base one, you would still have the same tires, but 235.19 or 235.18, I'm sorry. As far as the tread goes, I don't have the measuring device with me, but I mean, it seems pretty good. I can see them lasting another 30, 40,000 miles without any problem. The front seems pretty good too, as you can see here. Um, right there. Yeah, they can definitely last another 20, 30,000 miles without a problem, but like I said, I do plan on autocrossing this thing a little bit more often, maybe taking it to the track, so that will indicate that will increase the wear on the tires. And I mean, if I'm being really honest with you, I don't plan on keeping these tires and wheels for too long. I do want to go a wider setup just because it looks much better. You get a lot more traction. So I'm probably going to end up with 315s or even 325s in the rear because um, in my opinion, that's going to make the stance look much better because right now, if you look at the tires, they kind of tuck in as you can see here so i would want this to be pushed out i don't want to do spacers i'd rather do wider wheels and wider tires so as far as the tires and brakes are concerned i would probably imagine like i said thirty thousand miles or so before these would need replacing and given my driving that's another two to three years so nothing that needs to be done right now of course i may end up doing the tires sooner than that before they completely wear out but that's the maintenance item, tires and brakes. I mean, every car you own, you're gonna have to deal with that. So given that's not summer tires, they don't wear out too, too quickly, like the Performance Pack 1 or 2, which don't have that much of a good life. They're probably like 20,000, 30,000 miles and you have to replace them. Now, as far as the reliability concern on this car, I've had to unfortunately take this car in for some transmission issues. Uh, I do a video on my channel regarding that, but essentially what was happening is Every time you were in drive and it was in 10th gear and you try to floor it, if it dropped below six, six or below, it was in a very, very hard shift. But if you dropped into nine first and then you floored it, it was quite very smooth. Same goes if you were in sport mode, I had no issues. Now, if you didn't know, this 10 speed transmission was co developed with GM, which means uh, the hardware unit is the same, but in terms of the software ford and gm obviously have their own software so ford software tends to be a little bit behind what gm is doing currently so even though there's no hardware issues because there's plenty of builds making 800 900 horsepower without any rebuilds 
it has some software quirkiness that Ford needs to iron out. I did hear 2021 model year had a new software update, so I'm hoping I can get it on this one. Um, because I'm starting to get this again, so I may have to take the Mustang to the dealership and see if they can update it to the newer software or maybe fix it up. Last time they fixed it up by deleting a corrupted file which was found in adaptive learning software. So I'm assuming it's the same thing, but maybe just having a new software update will result in all these problems being solved. Aside from that, there hasn't been any reliability concern on this Mustang since the 20,000 miles I've owned it. Um, there are a couple of build quality issues, but I feel they're just too small to really involve the dealer. Like the pin chips very easily. Um, I think as you can see right here, there's one on here. Some of the panels don't really align well and stick out and there's a panel gap. Same thing kind of same thing kind of carries over to the front bumper. Like I'm sure if I took it to the dealership and expressed these concerns, they may be able to try to realign the hood and the deck lid. But I feel like that's just very small stuff and I don't want to have them to kind of take apart the whole hood and the deck lid just to make it align properly. It doesn't bother me as much and it's not as bad unless this was a show car. Maybe I would be very nitpicky, but since it's a daily driver, I could care less. On the interior side, surprisingly, there's no rattles or creaks um, that I've really noticed. Uh, it's just this grill that kind of shakes. It's a little loose, like I don't think it's gonna come off, but compared to the other one over there, I've had no issues with that. That one is pretty solid. So as you saw from those reliability concerns, uh, it's nothing too big of a deal, at least right now, because the car is still under warranty. There's no weird um, creaking or interior rattles I've experienced so far. So knock on wood, uh, it's been amazing, basically. So in the 20,000 miles I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT, which is also about two years since I've owned it, um, it's been a pleasant experience so far. I wouldn't say there's any major concerns. I would definitely like the transmission to be fixed up. I'm not as concerned because like I said, it doesn't seem to be a hardware issue, it's just a software issue. And I can easily bypass it by putting it in sport mode or drop into ninth gear and then flooring it. But so as you can imagine, it's a little bit annoying to have that. Um, so I definitely do want that to be taken care of under warranty and hopefully I don't have to worry about it after the warranty is over. Cause then I gotta pay for my hard earned money for something that Ford should have fixed. Maintenance wise, this also hasn't cost me that much. Of course, I have some complimentary points to use against my old changes, but overall it's cost me $25 to maintain this 2019 Mustang GT for the 20,000 miles I've owned it. Now, of course, as I'm gonna need a bigger ticket item, such as tires and brake, it's gonna start adding up. But that's one of the things I love about Mustangs or even just the local muscle car, whether it's Camaro, Challengers. One, they tend to be very reliable and the parts are shared with so many other cars or truck that you really don't gotta pay out of pocket and pay because it's a specialized muscle car, sports car. Whereas I have owned a 2006 Mustang GT that actually bought it 105,000 miles and took it all the way to 154,000 miles with nothing but old changes. So in my opinion, that's what I love about Mustangs. You can definitely get this car and not have to worry about long-term. All right, but that's pretty much it in terms of my experience of the 20,000 miles I've owned my 2019 Mustang GT. As you can see, it's a very pleasant experience couple of hiccups here and there that I'm hoping they'll be ironed out soon. But overall, I would definitely recommend this car if you are in the market or if you are, if you just bought a car and you're trying to see if it will last long for a long period, then definitely there's no issues with that. Of course, 20,000 miles isn't much to brag about. It's still a fairly new car. So the test really begins after 50, 75,000 miles, 100,000 miles really. So I do plan to make it more of an update uh, series of a video as I kind of go through these milestones and just kind of see what I've had to experience in terms of the maintenance, reliability, what the cost has been, and any reliability concerns I have for the future. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do subscribe so you can kind of follow on these builds in terms of mods and also the maintenance and reliability of my 2019 Mustang GT. All right, so if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button. Comment below what you think is gonna happen with the long-term reliability of these S550 Mustang. Is it gonna be a very sought after platform given they respond very well to the boost and also the fact that most of the cars are gonna be electric not soon after. And I was always subscribed to Red 5.0 for more Mustang content.